Hi and welcome to Discover Your Mind. So your mind is very, very, very complex, infinitely complex. But put quite simply, it has two roles to keep you alive and protect you from harm. So if there's anything that threatens your mind, your mind's going to create strategies to avoid that the next time it happens. This is a fear. These fears can come from anywhere. Previous experiences as a child, the experiences of your parents, or the experiences of your ancestors or culture. We can understand what fears are rational and what fears are irrational. These fears are trying to tell you not to do something because it's going to harm you or even kill you. Now, I'm going to explain an example to you because I have a stutter. I've had a stutter my whole life and after I injured my head it got a whole lot worse. At school I would have to give public presentations and speak in front of people. This would make me feel like I would die. I got anxious, my heart would tremble, my hands would sweat and, sh and shake and I'd stand there in front of the class and everybody would look at me. My fears were making the situation a whole lot worse than it was. The ironic thing is that the fears are part of what was causing the stutter. So here we have an irrational fear. If I speak in front of people and I stutter a few times, I'm not going to die. It's not going to harm me. Well, it could harm me emotionally, but realistically, I'm harming myself. So, sometimes when we have these fears, there's something we need to overcome. If I had not overcome these fears, I would not be here in front of you today. So, I like to explain the mind as being like a big, vast ocean. So, we have an ocean. Now, the ocean is calm. It's calm, so we're moving through the day, we're relaxing, there's nothing too bad. But then what happens when you have a trigger? Now, the trigger can be anything. Being late for work, uh, a call from your parent, you can have, you can have anything that will trigger your anxieties and trigger a thought pattern. So what will happen is you get a trigger and you get this wavelength, which is a pattern in your nervous system a, a pre-created pattern by you or your parent or your ancestor or your culture. Now what happens is this trigger can create a thought pattern and a wavelength which can then create another trigger. This next trigger can create another trigger. So all of a sudden we have trigger upon trigger upon trigger upon trigger and our nervous system gets hyper excited. We get anxious, we start creating stories in our head of what's going to go wrong. Now, when you continuously create a story in your head, your body doesn't know if it's happening or if it's not. They've done research and they've proven that our body will react exactly the same way to our anxieties as if this was actually happening. So with me, when I got anxious about having to talk in public and I started to think about it, I would start to react as if that was happening. What happens is, if this is happening, you get an influx of cortisol. Cortisol is okay if you're being chased by a lion, but in large doses, it's really toxic. It's bad for every organ, it's bad for your musculoskeletal system, it's bad for your brain. It's a very, very unhealthy, unhealthy hormone in large doses, and what we're trying to do is understand our triggers and become aware of our minds, and so we can keep them at a nice level ocean. So the way we do that is with a skill called mindfulness. A lot of you might have heard of mindfulness, and it's really becoming aware of what's happening and what's not. Once you can become aware of your triggers and your mind, you can keep yourself at a nice ocean and realize when this has happened and call yourself back into that calm, stable space. In our next video, we're going to use a really nice tool called the Wheel of Awareness. This is by a clinical neuropsychotherapist in Harvard, Dan Siegel, who's a very powerful and influential speaker, and I've been looking at his work for years. I think we're all going to really enjoy that, and it's a really nice tool to just get started with some awareness of what's going on in our minds. 
So for now, I'd encourage you to journal, to reflect on this, and if you have time, we're going to watch that video now, and we're just going to understand a little bit of this wheel of awareness and a little bit of this mindfulness.